they went dull. Why does that happen? So this, uh, you know, evacuation of the bowels when it didn't happen completely, it's like um, stuff that was unwanted is staying in the body for a longer time. So it is leading you to feel more dull, more sleepy. You will notice this. Also, you will notice that there are times when you feel very drowsy and sleepy. But after you clear your bowels, suddenly you seem more alert. This is all linked and we have to start noticing these subtle things. Because that makes a lot of difference. Once you are able to be aware, then you can make all the right choices. So you will find that you have better health in this case. Also, if you wake up early, it helps you synchronize this day-night cycle. Otherwise, if you stay up till late at night, you wake up late when the sun is already up. Now you're waking up. Now again, at night, you won't be sleepy when it's time to sleep. Now your day-night cycle has gotten disrupted. Your circadian rhythm has gotten disrupted. That will lead to problems in health. So these are all some of the things. One more thing to notice is that nascent oxygen is abundant in the atmosphere prior to dawn. This nascent oxygen, it combines with hemoglobin in the blood more easily. And that's why you have more alertness, more energy levels, activity, better immunity. All of those are benefits that you have from early rising. So all you had to do was to wake up early and all this will start happening. So uh, it can be a part of our daily routine. Yes. Any questions on that? We can take it. Otherwise, I'll move ahead. Yeah. Good evening, Didi. Good evening. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Hello. Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, here Prashant uh, Swami. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I have Prashant Swami from Sholapur. Uh, actually, uh, what I find that this clock, whatever you have been uh, discussing, mm -hmm. uh, I, came, uh, I, I can notice that whenever we go for any of the Shibir of Kendra or anywhere, uh, any Shibir is there, mm -hmm. that uh, workshops you can say. Uh, mm -hmm. That time, these uh, schedules are been very uh, strictly followed. Means yes. They have the breakfast time from 7.30 to 8.30 only. Yes. Even in the evening, that 7 to 8 is only the uh, dinner time. Yes. And in the afternoon, they are having from 12 to 1 o'clock or 1.30. Yeah. And uh, around uh, two th uh, three thirty or 3 o'clock, they are giving some of the kadas. Uh, and uh, the sleep time is exactly 10 o'clock. There is no doubt about that. <laughs> and the waking time is 4.30. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I can make out that whenever we are in that Shibir and the workshops, they, we are very much active. Yes. Uh, we do, don't get this all other things. And uh, that makes a difference, I think. And it is yes. nowadays, I, what, I, I, what I find is uh, this, uh, whatever the easiness we are getting, the objects that we are finding, uh, maybe the cause, because see, uh, we have to complete our assignments or some work. So little time we take in the evening, we find the time in the evening only, that is late night, say 11 o'clock. So that becomes a little bit, uh, what you can say, uh, the change that we wake up uh, around 6 o'clock, it happens sometimes. Yeah, that's what. So, so we for have to that, see uh, <laughs> what is our priority, how uh, we yeah. can work things out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have, actually, if you exactly. notice, we have enough time during the day to do many things. But there may exactly. be wastage of time. Exactly. exactly. You know, if we are sitting chatting exactly. Exactly. and nothing fruitful has come out of it. A lot of times what we find is exactly. we are chatting about other people. What this one did, what that one did, yeah. what that one didn't do, what so-and-so said to me, what so-and-so said to that one, and which doesn't mean anything. You know how a cow chews cud? What it does is it regurgitates from the <laughs> stomach and it chews on it again, isn't it? Exactly. So this is what we are doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we are bringing up <laughs> incidences that have passed <laughs> and we are bringing them up and yeah, talking yeah, yeah, about yeah. them, you know, but it doesn't help. So at that time, this... Right, Didi, right. Didi. If we become aware... Yeah, yeah. This was not the sharing, I can say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly. 
Yes. Sure, sure, sure. Then we... Hmm, hmm. Yeah, so... Sure, sure Didi. Yes. Um, there is another hand raised. We can take that. Uh, Sri Lata Ji. Namaste, Didi. Namaste. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine, Didi. Ji. One doubt I wanted to ask. Yes. How to find out what is our body uh, this thing, uh, type? Yeah, that is very you simple. There are several, uh, there are several uh, uh, questionnaires that one can yeah. use. Okay. And from that, it is easy. Of course, if you have, uh, you know, the traditional way was people can check the Nadi, the energy channel. Mm -hmm. An mm -hmm. Ayurvedic uh, physician could mm -hmm. perhaps, you know, the traditional Vedas doctors used to check mm -hmm. the Nadi and be able to tell you your constitution. Okay. But uh, that may not be accessible to us now easily. Uh -huh. So there are many questionnaires that you can go through and you will yeah. find you get the answer. Actually, yeah. in the ESIP uh, part also, some lectures were done. It may be a part of that. Otherwise, you can, we can talk I'll separately check. and I can find. I'll check. Yes, I'll check. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So moving forward, um, this was about early rising in the day, what it does, why Brahma Murta. Then observing the body. I know those of you who are in the morning session, we are doing this very regularly. But for those who are not also, it is important. So how do you observe? If you're just going to be lying in bed and trying to observe, you're going to drop off to sleep. So better thing is get out of bed, sit up, maybe you can wash your face, you know, close the eyes, just 10 to 15 minutes, try to observe what is happening in the body. What will you observe? First of all, do you feel like you slept well or not? Do you feel rested and relaxed or are you tired and tense? Quickly take a, like a scan of the body. You can have your eyes closed, but it's like you draw your attention to different parts of the body and you see if there is any aches or pains anywhere. Something feels stiff. Something feels like there is more pain. Is your body light and alert or does it seem sluggish and heavy? Do your muscles seem relaxed? Do they seem tense? Does the food seem to have digested properly or not? How will you know that? If you have some gas or some pain, some acidity, then you know that the food didn't get digested properly, which means you probably ate something wrong or you ate too much or you ate too late at night so that it, doesn't, it didn't have enough time to get digested. So then if you notice all this, then for the next day, or the upcoming day, you can make those corrections accordingly so that it can aid the body in coming back to its normal state of harmony. You can check your breath pattern. How is the breathing? Is it normal, slow, or is it rapid? Is it like how, you know, when you are anxious about something, you will notice that you are breathing fast. You are breathing rapidly. Sometimes, of course, when you're observing your thoughts, you can see that that now you have a feeling which is not naturally acceptable. But if you are not being tuned to that yet and you are not able to observe those more subtle thoughts, feelings, then even in the body you will see this. You will see the change in your breath pattern. You may see the change in your heart rate. Right? So all of this you can look in the body and then you look in the mind. What kind of thoughts? What kind of feelings? Do you feel peaceful? Are you agitated? All of this. So why are we observing? So that you become conscious. You become aware of what is happening in the body and what is happening in the self. Of course, what is happening in the body is linked to what is happening in the self. So the body has a natural self-organization, a natural state of harmony. But 
when we are um, sort of uh, having some some thoughts and feelings which are not in line with our natural acceptance then it disrupts that harmony in the body it has an impact on the body so it is linked so if you can't even see directly in the self you will you if you notice through the body also you will notice that there is something going on in the mind which is causing that and you can indirectly look at it but eventually you'll be able to look at it directly in the self so accordingly you can make adjustments you can make changes during the course of the day so that you can get past this so that is about observing the body early morning hydration we spoke of before sunrise the water intake the warm water you can even take up to 1 liter of water in the morning uh, before sunrise of course if you gulp down so much water after sunrise it may not be as beneficial as we had mentioned um i think we already discussed that but quickly we'll go over this the bowel movement is a natural urge one of the natural processes of self organization of the body in trying to cleanse the system so you need to aid that urge you should not suppress it a lot of times when children are small they tend to suppress that sometimes children have fear of going to the toilet you know, what will happen and so on so one can talk to children one can encourage them and of course for older people also it is important to realize that um this urge should not be suppressed because the body is trying to cleanse itself the body is trying to remove the toxins from the body and if we are stopping this process or if we are suppressing this urge then we are blocking that uh release of toxin from happening so what's going to happen then if the bowel movement is not evacuated at that time then the toxins from that will keep circulating in the blood stream and this is what ends up with problems like high blood pressure and so many things like that so the bowel movement should happen soon after you wake up after you have observed yourself after you have drunk the water the warm water then you should go for the bowel movement so we mentioned this in the early morning there is increased gut peristalsis and increased blood circulation in the large intestine soon as you wake up the gut becomes active you will notice you know some sort of gurgling sound sometimes some gas passing around in the body something is happening the gut movement is starting when you wake up and of course if you wake up early then the blood circulation already is more early morning so that helps some people say you know i have this question about how often should one have a bowel movement what is normal so once or twice a day is generally considered normal for some people once may be fine for some people twice is also fine um morning is ideal and you will notice that the like we said the stomach the intestine seems to clear the best in the morning but uh, along with that evening also many people have a bowel movement in the evening also and which is fine there's nothing wrong with that see why i'm talking about all this is we don't talk about the bowel movement somehow we think that you know all these nice things we should talk about observing hydration but this is something we don't talk about but one must know because this is something very very important how long should it take it should just take about 5 to 7 minutes if you're taking half an hour in the bathroom there's something wrong either you know we are not eating a diet which is conducing conducive to having a bowel movement smoothly or we are uh, eating very late in the night so it is leading to indigestion and so many problems related to that so it can lead to constipation or um, just you know having too much of things that are not appropriate for us 
processed kinds of foods. You know. Sometimes people, you know, keep books and magazines in their uh, bathrooms because it takes so much time. So that's not a good option. Why isn't it a good option? Because just like you have to pay attention to the body at all times, well, at least pay attention to the self at all times and to the body at some times, at this time, you must pay attention to the body because this is a process that you are trying to help the body in doing. So your instruction must be very clear to the body. But if you are getting distracted, reading a magazine, reading a book, doing something else, then you are not paying attention to the process that is happening or should happen. And therefore, you will be not aware of the situation. Just like you have to pay attention when you're eating food. Similarly, you must pay attention when, you're, when you need to pass a bowel movement. So the whole process should not take more than five to seven minutes. If it is taking too long, what to do? Don't just stay there and strain and strain because that's not good. What do you need to do? During that day, you have to do some course correction. What is that course correction? In the intake, you increase your fiber foods. What do we mean by increasing fiber foods? Increase fruits and vegetables. Cut down on processed foods. Cut down on... Processed foods means what? It's not just bakery items that you get from outside. Even your home foods can be processed. If you're eating fried mixture type foods which are made at home, that is still junk. That is still got perhaps zero fiber or very little fiber. Similarly, there are some other things which have very little fiber. So milk, although it is good for you, milk is uh, you know, beneficial, it has calcium and so on and so forth and curd is good and all that. But if you have lots of this, there is no fiber in milk. Similarly, if you're eating white rice, no fiber. So whatever you are eating, if you can just make sure that you have something that has a lot of fiber. So you can eat a salad maybe half an hour before your meal. You can have a lot of fruit in the morning. Uh, you can drink plenty of water because that will help flush things down. All of that can be done. So fiber foods, having a lot of water intake, practice having that warm water when you wake up, normalize your sleep-wake cycle. If you're staying up too late at night, you will notice that you're not able to go to the toilet properly in the morning because you have disrupted that normal harmony in the body. So then things don't work as well. Even if you try to wake up early, you're not able to manage that. So... You normalize your sleep-wake cycle. Do some daily exercise. The body is meant to be active. So if we become couch potatoes, we are just sitting here, we are going to work, we are sitting there, then we come back, we are sitting again. Then um, this is not very good for the body, the, for the internal functions, for the internal organs to work well. So... Especially for students, I think it's very good that if you play some games, you will find that uh, the body works much better. And you will have that feeling of alertness. You'll be able to study better also. You'll find that you're able to concentrate better. Um, you don't feel so dull. You don't feel so lethargic and so on. These days, everybody has Western toilets, but... The Indian style toilet, there was a lot of use for that. Because the way you have to sit on an Indian toilet, you have to, um, one is, you know, bend the knees, sit on your haunches or sit on your um, uh, feet, like, uh, you know, sit down on the feet. And if you do that on a regular basis, your mm -hmm. ankles, your knees will not give you problem till old age. If you... Notice some of the village people who work in the farms, how comfortably they sit on their feet, you know, on the ground, sit down on the ground on their feet and they're able to cut grass for hours together. They do that. But we have gotten out of that habit because we don't use that posture. 
So if you want to bring that back, one of the best ways is use an Indian style toilet. Very soon, you know, all those problems will get solved and your um, it will be easy to pass bowel movement because gravity also aids more. And you're closing the knees, so to speak. So, you know, the pressure builds up. So all of that helps. Of course, it's a natural urge, so don't try to suppress it. Pay attention, what we already mentioned. If you suppress that urge and if you keep suppressing it again and again, it becomes an habitual part of that you know, cycle and you tend to have constipation large percentage of the time. Slowly what happens is that the rectum starts becoming less sensitive. So then there, is, there are more problems with piles or hemorrhoids, what we call fissures and so on, so that there will be blood in the stool and problems like that. Again, they can be solved, like people go in for surgeries and things like that. You can solve it with all of these, um, fiber foods, hydration, quick, you know, normalizing your cycle, doing some exercise, you will find that you, these problems seem to go away. Um, after the bowel movement, some other cleansing processes can also be done. Cleansing the eyes, you splash them with cool water. It's good for the eyes. Cleansing of the nose, you can use nasal drops to clean out the nose. Cleaning the teeth, the tongue, the mouth. In the case of the teeth, a lot of times there is, you know, if we don't clean the teeth properly, and we're talking of morning, but it's, it's equally important or more important to please, uh, to do this cleaning of the teeth at night also. Because after you eat, now if you don't clean the teeth and you just go to sleep with that, the bacteria are going to stay inside the mouth. And if there are food particles there, they're going to, you know, um, break down this food and form what we call plaque. And this plaque has this formation of acid since the bacteria are acting on the food. This acid in the plaque starts eroding the enamel of the teeth. So then you end up having cavities. So it's not necessary, you know, some people think that chocolates and sweets give rise to cavities. Not necessarily. Many times, if you are not maintaining the hygiene of the teeth, even if you're eating a lot of white rice at night and not cleaning the teeth, you will find you might end up having cavities in the teeth. And whenever this um, plaque becomes hardened, it becomes calcified, it forms tartar. So then you will need to take help to clean out that tartar because with just a brush or a neem twig or hands or something, it will not come out. So why to go to all that? Better to cleanse the teeth as you go along at night and morning. And after every meal, if you can rinse your mouth, then all the food particles will come out. So that is important. So this we mentioned, how often to clean? Twice a day, morning and night. What to use? So toothpaste, is something that has become the norm, but a lot of times it has many additives, many chemicals, and that can be harmful. So you can also choose to have something that is very natural, like neem twigs to chew on. There are many herbal kind of tooth powders also that one can use. And with the hand, if you can massage the gums, that is very useful or sometimes even with the neem twig. So that is uh, something useful to do, not just for taking care of the teeth, but also massaging the gums, because that's what is going to keep your teeth healthy. Tongue can be cleaned with a tongue scraper. Try to use a metal one rather than a plastic one. Uh, for the mouth, you can also do the process of oil pulling. So what is oil pulling? It is swishing of oil in the mouth for 15 to 20 minutes. You may think like, oh my God, what is all this? And morning, uh, I have to do so many things. I am rushing here, I'm rushing there. I have class, I have this, I have that. 
where am i going to find all this time for all this but if you start putting it in your routine you will find it's not that difficult so while you are doing that oil pulling you are swishing that oil around in your mouth you could be applying oil on the oil on the body you could be putting together your clothes you could be dressing up you could be doing so many things side by side uh keep it in the mouth keep swishing it in the mouth for 15 20 minutes and then you can spit it out and rinse your mouth what oil to use till oil is a good option sesame seed oil try to use cold pressed oils that is important don't use the refined oils because there the refining process can damage the oil the refining process uses either chemicals or heat and that damages the oil then it becomes harmful for the body in fact for all your needs whether it be to apply on the body whether it be to cook use cold pressed oils it's very interesting you know we think that because we are taking it in the body it needs to be something pure but when it comes to applying on the skin we don't think much but it's the same thing one you are absorbing through the mouth the other you are absorbing through the skin so whatever is not uh, good enough to eat is not good enough to apply on the skin also usually so cold pressed sesame oil is a good option if you are if it's warm weather you can also use coconut oil which is cooling for the body um for the skin you can massage the body you can apply the oil and massage it into the body now when it comes to bath water what kind of water so ideally not too hot not too cold many yogic practitioners will uh use cold water but you don't necessarily have to do that if you are thinking only about health of the body then neither too hot not too cold if you use very hot water it tends to dry up the skin so you will end up having more issues with that um and if you are using very cold also um it may not agree with you um so a lukewarm kind of water is fine you can also use herbal powders instead of soap those which have natural ingredients which are not uh, got harsh chemicals because that can damage the skin they are natural cleansers i exercises this is something that can be done on a regular basis especially for those people who are sitting in front of computer screens for a long time one tends to have what really happens is you know with that bright light and all your attention focused on that you tend to forget to blink when you tend to forget to blink uh that natural lubrication in the eyes gets disrupted and you're straining the eyes and it interferes with slowly you know you'll find that there are problems with eye muscles with eye uh lubrication the dryness the vision becomes hampered especially with age you will have what is called presbyopia which is uh this muscles becoming lax in the body so for that also movement of the eyes the moving moving the muscles of the eyes is very important and in general even for young people for students i think it's important because lot of times now we are spending too much time on the phone uh looking at the bright light on the phone the bright light on the laptop and in general we are having very bright lights in the homes so with all of that um it's causing a lot of strain on the eyes so it's a good thing to from time to time if you're working uh, very concentratedly with a laptop or phone from time to time look up look at a tree outside or something every 10 minutes or so so it will give a break and it is uh, relaxing for the eyes but in general you can do some of these eye exercises you can you know sideways up and down um, all of this turning around focusing on your finger all this can be done 
Yes, Kani Raja ji has a question, I think. Yes, please. Good evening, Didi. Good evening. Uh, Didi, a question. Uh, the thing is, huh. nowadays, while kids are ready for the school in the hurry, hmm. after just visiting the toilet, Hmm. It just was, especially now it is winter is approaching. The immediate next to thing is they are forced to take the breakfast. How That's much time right. gap is needed uh, after visiting a toilet? Yeah, see what happens is it's not so much after visiting a toilet how much time gap is needed. How much time gap is needed from the time they wake up? That is more important. So a lot of times children are waking up just maybe 45 minutes or so before it's time to go and then they have to rush so, you know you have to go to the bathroom you have to uh, have a bath you have to you know pack the tiffin you have to check your bag and then the bus is coming or something is happening and it's time to go very quickly so when you're rushing through all this and you haven't had anything to drink beforehand what's going to happen the bowel movement will not happen properly. If the bowel movement doesn't happen properly, you have been to the toilet, but everything didn't get flushed out properly. So you're not hungry. You don't feel like eating. So then trying to force the child to eat is not going to help because he's going to throw up in the bus very often. Rather than doing that, one should try to get the child to sleep early at night, wake up a little bit earlier, have a leisurely, you know, something to drink warm water to drink, maybe some running around, doing some exercise, and then going to the toilet and then doing this whole process. Then you will find that the child is able to eat better. Also, you know, avoid giving the child a dinner too late. Between dinner and the night sleep, let there be at least two hours gap. Then the dinner gets digested properly. Otherwise, that dinner will not get digested properly and morning there will be gas, bloating and they are not able to pass motion freely and they will not be hungry. That whole cycle gets disrupted. Does that answer the question? Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Thank you. So, we are almost out of time. We just have two, three minutes. So, I think if anybody has questions, we'll take them. This is something that we would have to continue another time because obviously this is not a small topic and uh, this is something that we have discussed on daily routine. But if enough people are interested, maybe we can do health sessions on a more, um, you know, in a more systematic manner and do all of these intake routine everything in that order properly uh, so that there is continuity yes surya kanchi yeah uh, didi one person related to ear can i put madam or only related to eye and uh, whatever is discussed so far no that's okay you can put it i if i can answer it i will answer it yeah uh, Didi, if there is any something uh, like uncomfortableness in ear, like hearing some sort of uh, sound. Yes, many times those kind of problems can happen. Okay. Uh, it may be something simple, like uh, sometimes, you know, the wax in the ear, it accumulates and it causes blockage. And... Uh, with that, some issues may happen. Uh, it may be water goes in and now a lot of wax has covered it up. Now it is stuck inside and it's not coming out, something like that. So in uh, traditional systems, you know, it used to be that you heat some oil. Yes. Um, and you put it like a couple of drops of hot oil in the ear. So that will make that wax kind of uh, get liquefied. If it is hardened, it will liquefy. And over a period of few days, if you keep doing this, slowly it will um, kind of ooze out. You know, uh, This is again a natural 
uh, self organization of the body that the wax whatever is there it tries to keep pushing it out so you will find that it's normal for everybody to have development of wax and the body is trying to push it out through the ear little by little from time to time so that process we can aid by using warm oil uh, you know just a couple of drops um, and helping yeah. that it's not a good idea to use uh, the buds and all to keep poking and trying to get the uh, stuff out because a lot of times you end up pushing it further in and then you will need uh, the help of some person you know like an ent person to with a tool to try to pull out that wax or something which also happens quite frequently then there is something like swimmers ear the water gets clogged inside and, and you know um, sometimes fungal infection can start so so many small issues can be there like that yeah 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 allopathy doctors uh, they usually do they don't suggest uh, like putting a uh, little uh, hot uh, oil into the yes, ear they do not because yeah. i think a lot of times allopathy is not open to many of these traditional practices but um i think to a large extent uh, they have been helpful in many ways so it's a, if we find out for instance what exactly the problem is then you can yeah. sort it out but um a lot of times we may not um know what is going on so especially if you have like a perforated ear drum and you're putting oil that's not a good option isn't it because now you're putting oil in an open space normally the ear canal is closed with an ear drum so if the eardrum ruptures for some reason if there's an infection inside or something like that and the eardrum ruptures and we keep putting oil inside then it's not a good option no because now you are you're creating more problem so maybe for that reason uh, they say that but we can discuss this uh, outside of this actually we are yeah. out of time yeah okay did they thank you thank yeah? you did this nice. okay Okay. Yeah. So um I think we should stop here no Parikshit bhaiya our time is up and perhaps yes, certain, certainly we certainly we must uh, also uh, give respect the circadian rhythm and yes. really uh, <laughs> <laughs> as we discussed on Saturday so we like to continue such more such session in yeah. in up- upcoming weeks as well so it's really nice and attractive and fruitful session and uh, we really thanks all of you to help us to explore That yes so we'll we'll more. see what we can do to try to fit in more of such sessions inside yes thank you, thank you everybody thank you everybody namaste namaste everyone namaste